Thank you. Thank you. I refer yes. the Minister for Foreign Affairs to the strategic direction statement in the Foreign Affairs and Trade Portfolio Budget Statement, where it states, gender equality and women and girls empowerment will be addressed across the aid program. As the Minister is aware, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action, an agreement adopted by the nations of the world to the advance gender equality in 12 critical areas of concern. This important document was the focus of this year's session of the Commission of the Status of Women at the United Nations headquarters in New York. It is reflected on the progress that has been achieved and the challenges that still lay ahead. The Minister assisting the Prime Minister for Women, the Senator, Senator the Honourable Michaelia Cash, and the Australian Ambas Ambassador for Women and Girls, Natasha Stotter-Spoyer, attended the Commission to advocate for renewed international commitment and momentum towards gender equality. Twenty years on, gender inequality persists in our region, undermining economic growth, human development and poverty reduction. The anniversary has placed women's empowerment front and centre on the global agenda with policy makers, political leaders, technical experts and gender advocates driving renewed political will and commitment. The evidence is clear. Gender equality is critical to development and must be a key part of Australia's aid program. I'm pleased that the government's uh, new aid paradigm released last year Australian aid, promoting prosperity, reducing poverty, enhancing stability, places gender at the heart of our aid program. The document highlights the alarming rate of domestic violence with one in three women in Southeast Asia and two in three women in some Pacific countries experiencing physical and or sexual abuse by their partner. It's estimated that the Asia-Pacific region is losing up to $47 billion annually because of women's limited access to employment opportunities and up to $30 US billion annually due to gen gender gaps in education. Minister, this statistic is alarming to me as a woman and particularly so the member of Solomon. My electorate is one of Australia's most multicultural communities with vibrant Asian and Pacific communities. In the time it takes me to travel from my electorate south to Canberra, an equivalent trip north would reach eight international capital cities, 36 trade uh, ports, 69 international airports and nearly half a, billion, uh, half a billion people. To put it simply, what's good for Asia is good for, good for Solomon. Economic growth in Asia means jobs in North Australia. Economic empowerment in Southeast Asia and the Pacific means markets for our goods, skills and produce. Given this statistic, how is Australia's aid agenda prioritising women's empowerment? How will the Abbott government assess the performance of our aid program in addressing gender inequality? In the Foreign Minister's speech on the government's new aid paradigm, she states, Globally, the private sector generates 90% of jobs and funds over 60% of investment. A strong private sector delivers high growth, more jobs and will help reduce poverty. According to the strategic direction statement in the portfolio budget statement, DFAT will strengthen the aid program engagement with the private sector and its promotion of the empowerment of women and girls. Minister, how is the Abbott government embracing the private sector to advance gender equality? Called the Honourable Minister. I thank the member for Solomon for her support of the Australian government's commitment to promoting opportunities for women and girls and uh, for her question. And I know that uh, she has worked very hard to support women and girls in her electorate of Solomon and in the Northern Territory. And as she rightly notes, the government's new aid paradigm reflects our strong commitment to empowering women and girls in our region. And that's why we've prioritised initiatives that enhance women's voices in decision making, in leadership and peace building initiatives, promoting women's economic empowerment and importantly, ending violence against women and girls in our region. Gender equality contributes to growth, development and stability. And when women are able to actively participate in the economy and in community decision making, everybody benefits. 
So gender equality is one of the six investment priorities of the aid program. And in the 2015-16 budget, I established a $50 million competitive gender equality fund. This is the first time this has been done. And the fund will support initiatives that advance gender equality and foster innovative work by private sector and non-government organisations, particularly women's organisations. And the fund will continue Australia's contributions to the influential global initiatives such as the United Nations work to end violence against women. It will also preserve important initiatives such as the Pacific Women Shaping Pacific Development. Uh, that initiative supports improved political, economic and social opportunities for women across 14 Pacific Island countries. But initiatives supported under the Gender, gender Equality Fund will complement gender activities currently funded through country and regional programs. We know a strong private sector delivers higher growth, more jobs and will reduce poverty. So if we can find a private sector solution available that is efficient and effective, we'll embrace it. And I've announced a new $15 million partnership with the World Bank to enhance women's economic empowerment in Southeast Asia over the next four years. We'll work with the World Bank, the private sector, to support women entrepreneurs to access financial services and build their business skills. I'll keep going. Yes, um, this partnership is going to see us work with large companies to improve employment opportunities for women, improve their workplace policies and increase the use of services provided by women entrepreneurs in their supply chains. And I know the member for Lindsay and the member for Solomon understand the skills required for women entrepreneurs. This investment will improve the knowledge of the ways to increase women's economic opportunities, apply those lessons to the design of programs. And we're going to do it through a Southeast Asian gender lab, which will undertake data collection, analysis and the um, evaluation of the impact that programs will have. And Australia's investment in women's empowerment through practical programs supports our international commitments, including at the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women. In fact, last month in Pakistan, I announced the skills training program for marginalised women and girls. And the program is going to support 5,000 women and girls in remote areas to develop skills suitable to the local job market and to access finance to establish small business, because as we know, in Australia and elsewhere, small business is the driver of economies. In the Pacific, Australia and Papua New Guinea have agreed to a five-year plan to promote gender equality. And I know that the member for Solomon is particularly interested in our initiatives with our close friend and neighbour in PNG. The plan, delivered through an Australian Pacific Women's Development Initiative, will focus on creating leadership and economic opportunities for women, coordinate the efforts of government, the private sector, NGO and community groups to pilot new and innovative approaches to help prevent violence. And so these are just two examples of how the Australian government is providing practical support to women and girls in developing countries and therefore driving economic growth, which provides job opportunities and sustainable communities. Thank you.